Hello, welcome to Electronics Education. I'm Vincent Chan. In this lecture, I want to give you some feeling about the st stability of a non-inverting amplifier. Stability of non-inverting amplifier, part four, simulation. I just said I want to give you some feeling. What it might mean by that is, you, for most of students, I believe, because I was a, I was a student before, so I I really have don't I did really understand what it is, because it's even when I was a professor, I teach students the the microelectronics still. I can solve the problem, but but still, it's still far from us. It's it's not in the reality, right? It's not real. You just what the stable, unstable, and if less than one, then stable, and greater than one. It's a, so what? Then it's it seems not real. Although I cannot tell t bring you to the lab. If this is the lab class, I will ask you to, you know, just do the lab work, and uh, then it will give you, this will give you some feeling, right? But it's the computer age, so you can simply just try this through, through simulation, right? Then you would give you some give you some feeling about the stability. You will feel this is real. So the purpose, the purpose, the objective, the teaching objective of this lecture is to help you make it real. Just feel this is real. So let's quickly review the stability issue. Frequency response, the beta. A series shunt, the feedback. And three pole amplifier. If the open load transfer function has the three pole, 100K, so one mega and 10 mega, 100 decibel. Then the frequency response of the magnitude transfer function and also the phase response. Remember the conversion from open loop gain A to loop gain. And the difference between A and A beta in terms of magnitude relies on the purple highlight. The purple highlight, 20 log 1 over beta. And I said this is very, this is why this matters. So you, you can just convert the different resistive network with different beta into a horizontal line with the magnitude of 20 log 1 over beta. And the intersecting point represent the unity gain frequency for the loop gain and the corresponding phase comparing the correspond you can just simply compare the corresponding phase with 180 degree to decide the st stability of the circuit. Right, this is what we learned before. So now, let me give you the first case, a first simulation. I strongly encourage you to try this by yourself. Of course, you have to learn how to simulate a circuit but let me just try to show you the result, okay? Let's say R1 is 100 kilo ohm, R2 is 4 mega ohm. So how you, can you judge the stability of this circuit? Of course you can, right? Because it's the 1 over 4,000. So it's probably, it's very likely it's, because 1 over 4,000 is less than 1 over 1,000, which is the 10 to the negative third power. So the line will be above or below. Will be above the critical beta, right? So it will be stable. Let me make this uh, more clear, okay? So 1 over 4,000 will give you the line around, you can just do the calculation, okay? So 
20 log 1 over 4,000 tells us it's around 72 decibel. So the line, and then you find the intersecting point, the corresponding phase is still within the 180. So this circuit is stable. This circuit is stable. But so what? So what? The simulation of stability. So now, this is the waveform, okay? In the previous slide, don't get confused. This is frequency domain. This is frequency domain, right? Now, for the simulation, this is time domain. See the waveform. This is the input waveform. So let's say we input a waveform. The simplest waveform that you can input is a step. Just a step. Let's say one millivolt step. Let's input a one millivolt step. Just fit the circuit with a one millivolt step. Then what? If this is the ideal case, you can estimate what's the output. If this is the ideal case, what's the closed loop gain? 4,000, right? So 1 millivolt times 4,000, actually it's 4,001, if you're talking about the, the kind of right, 4,000. So 1 millivolt times 4,000 will be 4 volt. So the output waveform should be around should be around 4 volt step, right? The VO divided by VS. But what's the issue? The frequency response you have to consider. And the feedback you also have to consider. Stability issues involves the two factors. Number one, feedback. Always remember this. Number two, frequency response. And omega 180. This lecture, although it's a simulation, just try to put everything together. You learn what you learned before together. Two issues. Feedback and the frequency response. Then what? Then what? Us. Then what? Omega and 180 degree. There exists a frequency F and 180. Omega pi, F180. So what? Three pole, right? So means F180 exists. Means what? Means there is a frequency, the specific frequency. When the, when the signal with the specific frequency travel around the loop for travel around the loop the phase won't change. It will be in phase. Oscillation happen. But if it's stable or unstable, growing, sustain, or decay, decline, then you have to see the magnitude of the loop gain at this frequency is less than one, equal to one, or greater than one. You get it? So in this case, it's less than one. It's stable. So ideally, it's the four. Four volt output. But considering the feedback and the frequency response, considering the stability, what you learned before, there will be oscillation superimpose the 4 volt. There will be an oscillation, the decayed, declined, damped the oscillation. Superimpose on the, see, I'm dancing. <laughs> okay, you get it? Impose on the 4 volt. It's kind of like magic, right? No. The simulation results tell you the reality. This is real. When you see this, I strongly encourage you, you can go to lab, try this. Then it's real. 
the simulation becomes real to you. The stability, the stability is through the simulation or through the experiment. Then you, you understand, your understanding rise up to a different level, all right? All right? I always remember when I was a student, no one told me this. Because when you try to read the textbook, you still don't understand. You still didn't understand. But I, I, it's my desire to help you really understand this. If you can understand what I just said, then you are there. You're good. Now, let me show you another example, okay? 1K, 9K, stable or not? Stable or not? Of course, you can try the hand analysis first. Because 1 divided by 10, 0 0.1, 20 decibel, right? So 20 decibel, then the 20 decibel line, the intersecting point, the corresponding phase exceeds 180 degree, unstable. This is unstable. Then, this is what we learned before, okay? Let's move on. Let's show you the, let's talk about the, let's try the step, same response, okay? The step response. Let's fill in the step input with a step size of one millivolt. Then what? What will happen? What happened? What will happen? Because it's unstable, right? You will see what? You see growing oscillation. Let's see the result. You will see the growing oscillation. This is the growing oscillation. So I think these two simulations, not just the simulation, but the objective, the teaching objective, your learning objective is to put what you learned before together and through the simulation, help you make this subject more real as a, a reality, okay? It's not far from you. It's not something in the cloud, okay? It's real. That's the purpose of me teaching this subject, this lecture. I really hope you rise up to a, the understanding at level rise up to a different level. All right, you have the deep understanding about the subject. We have come to the end of this lecture. Thanks for watching.